This is the Horse Radio Network. Greetings, everyone. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily, episode 1399, brought to you today by Wintech Saddles. Today's tip is an excerpt from the Horses in the Morning show, where show co-hosts Glenn and Christy Landwehr from the Certified Horsemanship Association chat with Beth Powers about exercises that help both horse and rider feel more at ease when hitting the trails. And we'll get right to our tip after we hear about Wintech Saddles. Wintech has been combining world-leading innovations and high-tech materials into lightweight, weatherproof, easy-care saddles for over 20 years. So it's easy to see why Wintech is the world's number one synthetic saddle brand. The comprehensive Wintech range offers not only cutting-edge designs, but new standards in fit, comfort, and performance. Benefits for both you and your horse. For example, wide fit is no worry now. With the Wintech 2000 All-Purpose and Wintech Pro models now available in wide fit. And what about our much-loved off-the-track thoroughbreds and their famously tough-to-fit high withers? Wintech has them covered too with the Wintech 2000 High Wither model. I might mention right here that I've ridden in the Wintech 2000 All-Purpose saddle for years. The seat is just deep enough for a comfortable, secure fit, and the grippy seat means full seat breeches are an option, not a necessity. Plus, it's well-balanced, so legs and seats stay where they should. Check out the entire Wintech line of saddles at wintech-saddles.com or visit your local retailer and sit in one today. So, well, I am thrilled to introduce Beth. Glenn, she's my boss, so you have to be nice oh, to her. Oh, okay. Yes. She is the current yes, president ma'am. Yes, ma'am. of, yes, yes, of right. uh, CHA, <laughs> and she's with, uh, in Bell Fountain, Ohio. She's a certified CHA instructor with us and an overnight guide, as well as a site trainer and visitor. She was the equestrian director for the Bar W Ranch at the YMCA Camp Wilson in Bell Fountain. She oversaw over 50 horses, a staff, and all the lesson programs, trail rides, summer camps, and overnight events. So was there anything that you did ahead of time in an arena or an enclosed space that would possibly help if fear happened when out and about on the trail? Well, I I was thinking about this question. I go back to what uh, Daniel Stewart used to say. Remember him? He he spoke at our conferences. He's a trainer and a coach and an author. And he talked about words that started with the letter C. And so I thought, well, these are wonderful words like courageous and confident and caring. So I would use these words talking with the riders as we do a little practice circle in the arena or maybe a little practice circle in the yard to try to get them thinking about these C words and even to tell them in their little, in their head as they walked along, I'm confident, I'm courageous, I can do this, it's okay, I'll be fine. He also had another trick, too. He would have, if a rider was really nervous, like before a test or whatever they're doing, he would have them sing a song to themselves. You pick your favorite song and you just sing it to yourself or out loud, whatever. Um, But that was one of the tricks that he he always used the song thing. And that is such a good idea, too. If you're singing, you can't hold your breath. Right, exactly, exactly. Um, uh, now, in my case, other people might be holding their breath when I'm singing, but uh, not me. I'll be fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, I do have a question. C- Christy, the one thing that we run into the most and the most uh, common is somebody falls off, and then they have a fear of getting up. And, you know, they could be a very experienced rider who falls off. Uh, maybe they get hurt. Maybe they don't. But they're just, you know, lacking confidence after that. So, Beth, what do you do then? How do you help somebody regain their confidence after falling off? Well, of course, again, you have to acknowledge their fear and their trepidation for getting back on. Um, you can have them walk a little bit with you. You can put them, um, I, sometimes I put them on my horse and I would walk along with them. Um, and that would help them. They would be right next to me. Uh, but I, I think with older riders, it's a little bit trickier because of course we don't, we don't bounce back literally when we fall like kids do. 
Uh, and sometimes the distance away from the barn is a great motivator. You can walk the whole trail for the next 45 minutes or try to get back on and, and see about riding it. And I think, too, what, that was interesting what you said about getting on your horse, because I think that they also lose, com- just like when my pony was bolting in the carriage, you kind of lose confidence in in your pony, and maybe they lose confidence in you, too. It's probably a two-way street. but And, and that takes time to rebuild. So, But first, got to rebuild that rider's confidence before they can go back to that horse and work on that relationship again, right? Oh, that's so true. And my horse is pretty good size. So when I put a sixth grader up on her, um, you know, she would just follow me anywhere for the most part. Um, so that the child had to realize, oh, I'm getting on this giant horse, but I was okay up on her. Now the smaller pony, I think I might be able to tackle again. Yeah, no, that that makes sense. And I'll tell you, you know, th- with, that kind of leads you into some horses are very stoic, right? Like your mare. And some horses are very not stoic. So, and I, obviously in your camp program, you probably weeded those kinds of horses out right away and you didn't use them in your program. But I'm sure in your experience, you've had horses that are also afraid on the trail because even your stoic ones can have a moment where they don't want to cross the bridge or they don't want to go over the creek or whatever the case is. So how did you work with horse rider combinations when those kinds of things happened? Well, generally as a whole group, we would stop and we would kind of look and watch the, the Amish buggy go by, or we had a lot of deer on the trail. Many times the deer would get used to us and we would just sort of watch and wait and see what the deer would go, which way would they would go. And many times I would have, to, I would, and as a lead rider, I, I would talk to the deer to see if I could get the deer to wander off to the trail. If they were going to go to the left, I would go to the right and so forth. But it got to the point where there were so many deer who could care less about us. I would have this entire conversation with the deer, and they'd still stand there and look at me. Until one point, a child behind me at one ride goes, that lady's talking to the deer and telling it what to do. And the deer then went to the left, and we went to the right. I was a deer whisperer. (laughs) <laughs> well, and I'll tell you, Beth, you're so right about the deer because we have them here in Colorado, too. And if we come up on them and they're sitting, laying down and we go by them and right at that particular moment, they decide to jump up and flee. That's going to cause a spook in your best of stoic horses. Right. So we yeah, did the so same that- thing. We're like, look at the deer. Like, will you please stand up? Right. And we kind of have the horses look at them and walk towards them so that eventually they felt pushed like a cow would. And they got up and they walked calmly off because, yes, that's not good when they become little. And then all of a sudden they become big when they stand up last minute. Right. Right. And that's happened to me several times. I would think, well, I guess we'll just kind of go. I got I got a schedule. I got more people coming. And, you know, five horses go by and the deer stands up slowly and everybody kind of goes, ah. I bet you didn't have any trouble with uh, kids and sleds, did you? <laughs> no, not as much. I didn't have any trouble with Amish buggies either here in Denver. <laughs> well, our, our toboggan hill at the bottom, the, the one trail comes around the bottom of that hill to go back up to the barn. And uh, the fathers and sons couldn't understand. Well, they wanted everybody to wait at the top of the hill before they went flying down on their plastic sleds right into the middle of the trail ride. And, you know, I think that's so funny you say that. I was at um, Idrahaji, which is where my boys go to camp, and we were um, certifying some day ride trail guides a couple of weeks ago. And they have their archery range is pretty close to where you do trail riding, and they're doing the arrows, you know, away from where you ride, but still that the noise, right, that the arrow release Mm -hmm. happens and the noise when it hits the target, (laughs) the same conversation happened. All the regulars went, yeah, the first couple of rides, the horse spooks on this. I said, yeah, I bet. They go that after a while, they just don't care anymore. I'm like, all right. So it's interesting when you have to combine things, like especially in a camp environment, how the horses get used to it over time. But at first, it's very unusual for sure. Oh, yeah, there's very tense moments when Somebody's running with those big plastic sled and the wind catches it. So now it's this parasail behind it flopping and you just sort of stop and have everybody breathe and have it go by and then explain to the person how that's not a good idea or, you know, walking by and now it's raining. So you want to put up your umbrella now. And that's kind of uh, scary as well. 
It's called Education for Everyone. And that's a wrap. You can find links to today's guests and more tips at horsetipdaily.com. If you have not done so already, head on over to your app store and search Horse Radio Network and download the free Horse Radio Network app. That way you can have all of your favorite Horse Radio Network shows with you wherever you go. This is Coach Jen, and I will be back again soon with another tip. So until then, go ride your horse. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements made by guests on the Horse Tip Daily. Please use your own judgment when listening to the tips on this show. <music>